it's me, Zombie, and today we are making some horn-tastic shoulders from Diablo 3. I'm making a crusader from the game, and I thought that these giant horn-alicious shoulders would go great with the rest of my build. Before we get started, I have to thank Cosplay Amino, who has once again sponsored the video this week. Thank you very much, Cosplay Amino. If you haven't already joined Cosplay Amino, it's an easy to use app that helps you connect with other cosplayers from all around the world. The community is super welcoming to cosplayers of all skill levels, and you can even join group chats to talk about your current build. You can host polls, and you can share your work with others in the community. I've really enjoyed chatting with you guys on Cosplay Amino, and I can't wait to see you guys there. To start making my shoulders, I'm rolling out some cling wrap and sticking it to my actual shoulder. And of course, before I can do anything else, my cat Neeners wants to help. Hello, Neeners. After some decent cat petting, I'm taking strips of duct tape and layering them over the cling wrap. This just helps it hold its shape. I took off my pattern frequently to get more duct tape strips. This part would have been easier with a friend, but you can totally do it on your own too. It just takes a little bit longer. Once I had my basic shoulder shape made with my cling wrap and duct tape, I laid it down in my work area and added onto both sides of the pattern. These shoulders are going to be huge, so I want to make sure that my pattern is big enough to work with. After adding on some more material, I sketched the basic shape of the shoulder onto my pattern. I drew a line where the middle of the shoulder would be. I did this so I could mirror one half of the pattern I already drew so my shoulders could stay symmetrical. I cut the pattern to size and added some seams. I should have added the registration marks before I cut this thing into three pieces, but that's okay. I was able to add them carefully after I cut the pattern into pieces. I traced each pattern twice onto 10 millimeter EVA foam using a metallic marker. I use six millimeter foam for a lot of my pieces, but I'm using a thicker piece of foam today because these shoulders are supposed to be super beefy and thick. Thick and beefy. Using a sharp utility knife, I cut out all my pieces. I applied contact cement to the inside of the edges and use a piece of scrap foam as a squeegee to smooth out the surface and get rid of any excess glue. I let each edge get tacky before applying another coat of contact cement. I like using a couple coats of contact cement for edges like these because it makes the bond even stronger. Then I stuck all my edges together. I really made sure to take my time during this part just to make sure that all my edges matched up. After I stuck my first pieces together, I repeated the same process of tracing my patterns onto foam, cutting them out, applying barge, and sticking them together. I applied another coat of barge down the middle of each piece, let the glue set, and stuck my shoulder pieces together. And now I have the two base pieces for my shoulders. Before we continue with the rest of the tutorial, I have a confession to make. I goofed up big time and I lost some footage. So I'm going to use my best dramatic reenactment skills to explain what happens for the next 20 seconds or so. I am so sorry. I used some two millimeter foam to wrap over the base piece. If you stick the two millimeter foam over your base piece with barge, you get this cool smoothed over effect without having to use warbler. If you're curious or would like to know exactly how I did this, I'll leave a couple videos about how I do a two millimeter foam wrap right down below in the description. I trace the border detail of my shoulder with cling wrap and duct tape. Then I transferred the pattern onto some six millimeter foam. I cut out the border, used a rotary tool around the edges, and stuck it to the base piece using super glue. I made this raised detail by gluing together two TNT Cosplay Supply foam dowels and sticking them straight onto the shoulder using super glue. Now back to the real tutorial. It's time to make some horns and stick them onto the shoulders. 
First, I'm using 10 millimeter foam and cutting it into some rectangle pieces. I'm making stacks of three rectangles and gluing them together with contact cement. I decided to make a little production line of gluing my stacks together. I'm squishing on the glue with my glue bottle and using a piece of scrap foam as a squeegee to get rid of the excess glue and make the surface smoother. Once my first pieces of my foam stacks got tacky, I flipped them over and stuck them all together. I repeated the same process of gluing, flipping, and sticking the last pieces of my stacks together. Using some pattern paper, I sketched the shape of my horn. There are two large horns on each shoulder, and they're each about the same size. Luckily for me, that means I only have to draw one horn. I cut out my pattern with scissors and traced it onto one of my stacks with a metallic marker. Once I started tracing, I noticed that two horns would fit onto each stack. I didn't plan for that, but I'm happy it happened that way. So now I have some leftover stacks I can use for some other horns that will be going onto the armor later. I used a larger utility knife to cut out my four horns. Now it's time to start carving. I use the same utility knife to carve away some of the foam. I want these horns to be round, so cutting away some extra material is a step in the right direction. Whenever I started feeling resistance on my knife, I used a sharpener to sharpen the blade so I could get a cleaner and more precise cut. I used my rotary tool to smooth down all the jagged edges and make these horns more even. I also used scissors to get rid of some extra material around the points of the horns. It's time to make these shoulders horn-tastic! One of the horns on each shoulder is pointing more upward than the other one is, so I cut an angle into one of the bases of the horns so it sits differently once attached. I used super glue to attach my larger four horns onto the base. There are some smaller horns that go onto the shoulder as well. I was able to find some foam scraps from cutting my horns and use those to create my smaller ones. I cut the edges with the utility knife, smoothed the edges down with the rotary tool, and glued them in place. The larger horns have smaller barbs on them. I cut up some scrap foam into teeny tiny little horns. I used a rotary tool to smooth them down and used glue to stick them onto my larger horns. I used foam dowels from TNT Cosplay Supply for my other details on the base piece. I cut the dowel down and carved the end to a point. I used a rotary tool to even the edges and used super glue to put it in its place. I repeated the same process for my other shoulder too. The last part of the shoulders are these plated pieces here in the middle. I sketched my pattern directly onto 6mm foam and cut it out. I used a rotary tool to round the edges and then I glued them all together. I etched in some details with an X-Acto blade and used a heat gun to help open up the details to really make them pop. I added little horns onto these plated pieces as well. I cut out two pieces of black 3 inch elastic and I used hot glue to attach the elastic to the base piece of the shoulder. I used a scrap piece of 2mm foam to sandwich my elastic together. I did this process again, only with the bottom part of the plated piece. These shoulders sit up pretty high and I wanted to give the illusion that they were super thick. To accommodate for this, I used some stacked 10mm foam and cut them into smaller rectangle blocks. I super glued one of the blocks to the underside of the top of the shoulder and one to the bottom of the shoulder. This will give the shoulder some extra height. After the glue is dry, these parts are officially constructed. Woohoo! I use my heat gun to seal the foam. Sealing the foam helps get rid of the foam's pores and helps paint go on a lot smoother. Finally, I use some Plasti Dip to prime my shoulders. I like applying a couple of generous coats onto each piece prior to painting. And ta-da! Here are my constructed shoulders. These are probably one of my favorite pieces I've made for this cosplay so far. They're so fun and huge. 
This week's makers include the Gnome Queen from Instagram, who made this gorgeous Balrog cosplay. Look at her horns, look at her face paint, and those giant wings. She looks like a freaking badass. Amazing job. Also, Simply Abraham made this awesome Black Panther cosplay just in time for the movie, and it looks like he's having a ton of fun in it. If you'd like to be a Maker of the Week, go ahead and choose your social media of choice and show me what you're working on. I love seeing what you guys create. It really makes my day. And when you submit your work, you have a chance to show up at the end of the video because you deserve it. Your work is amazing. So thank you in advance for showing me all your cool props and costumes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, everybody!